Now, be honest, if you fly in VR, you've tried to read documents while still in the headset. It's difficult and it definitely breaks the immersion. My name's Mark and welcome to the Sim Hanger, the Sim Hanger for all things flight sim related. Today we're looking at programs and applications that will help us view documents in VR and in particular in the VR cockpit. We're going to be trying out various document VR management tools in a number of simulators, including where it all started with Fly Inside for FSX and Prepared. We'll also be trying it in Native Prepared as well as X-Plane 11.35 and the newer Fly Inside Flight Simulator. These programs tend to fall into two different types. One is specifically for Flight Sim or a particular simulator and the others are generally more open VR programs. We'll take a look at both. If you enjoy it, don't forget to subscribe and tap the bell for future notification. Let's get started. We're in prepared version 4.5 at Telluride and I'm using Fly Inside for FSX and prepared through the main menu. Make sure we are under SIM and at the bottom there's the import window button. Press that and it displays a list of documents. I'm going to choose a PDF, a checklist for the Saab 340. Now if you get this sort of window it means that it's minimized on your desktop and it will not display. It has to be open on your desktop. It's now open on the desktop and now it can display and I can resize and I can move it around anywhere in the cockpit, even outside of the cockpit. This allows for more accurate resizing and at the button at the top allows for quick resizing. The document itself, all the controls within that document operate as if it was on your desktop so it can be made larger, you can scroll and so on. We're not limited to just PDFs, so I'm now going to go in and choose another window. I've got a, my browser open or with a number of tabs already preset. Once again, I can resize as needed. And I can change the angle and location of it as needed. Position it anywhere by clicking on and holding the mouse button down while you move it. So my first tab is a, my airways and my map. I can click on the airport and get the details. This is live off the internet. I can scroll and move around as needed. I've also set up on the second tab information on Telluride Regional Airport and on the third tab I've set up YouTube. You could have music playing or a video or anything like that, particularly if you're doing a long flight in a tube liner. And again, any size, any position that's required no problem at all. To close the window just click it and it's gone. I'm going to change track now and uh, have a look at a program called Daily VR. I can open the menu by clicking on that icon just at the base of my hand there. Now the Daily VR is a Steam application and it is available from Steam I've opened Google, my browser, and I can attach it to one of my hands. 
I can change the size. I can change how opaque it is. Got a menu at the top, can pull up a keyboard if I want to enter some data. Now for the movement. Rather large keyboard, not very practical in a small cockpit but it is a facility that's there and once again once the window is open it operates as if it was on your desktop so i've clicked on one of the tabs and this is just flight's web page i can scroll i can resize now clicked on YouTube and I can pull up a video and play that there are quite a wide range of different VR overlay programs for both Steam and Oculus users the one we've just been trialing is Daily VR. The details are on the Steam website. There's a variety of other programs such as OVR or OVR Drop and also OVR Toolkit. Um, quite a popular program, that one. There's a wide range and one just needs to trial before you buy if you can. Some are fairly clunky and usability varies considerably between the different programs. Here I'm using Daily VR in Native Prepared. Bring up Windows, Resize, Scroll. Exactly the same as in the Steam House. You can have multiple windows open at one time. Position it anywhere. I think I'll put this... Let me put this on the back seat. The more windows open, the bigger hit on the frame rate. Now the menu itself is fairly large, but again by clicking the icon there, we can remove it. Just touching very quickly on the new Fly Inside flight simulator from Fly Inside. Because this has been built from the ground up, to be VR compatible, just about everything is accessible via the VR and the extensive VR menus. From selecting aircraft, I've just chosen the Milvis 310. We can access all settings, maps, etc. from the various menus, although interestingly, there is no way, no built-in feature to bring in external websites, Google, YouTube or something of that nature. Maybe there, but I haven't seen it, which is quite interesting. Maybe something for the developers to give thought to in the future. You can, of course, use a VR overlay such as Daily VR in Fly Inside Flight Simulator if you want to. It operates exactly as demonstrated. Moving on now to Explain. We're going to have a look at a program called Avitab or Aviator's Tablet by Folco. It's a free download from explain.org. It is installed in your resources plugin and you activate it as you would any other plugin via Xplain. It has a number of categories, the first one being charts. Now any charts that you want to access have to be put into the Avitab charts directory. But one of the advantages of that is you can just have the charts that you want for your particular flight at that time. Here's the approach to Telerud. It can be manipulated, scrolled, and accessed, no problems. Routes. Let's put in a route from Sedona 
Kilo Sierra Eka Zulu to Telerud. Kilo Tango Echo X-Ray. Oats, Winslow, Rattlesnake. Perfect. It's the exact route. And it pulls that in directly. It's got maps. And these maps can be zoomed in. And you can either use the X-Plane map, which I've got here. And you can move and zoom around. Or you can choose one of the other maps. Open Topo. Some of the other maps have to be downloaded. On to aircraft and we're able to access documents for the aircraft through this tab. You need to make sure that the documents are loaded in the aircraft directory. Just having a look at the Pilatus here and we can pull up the PDF and access it. Scroll through the pages. In terms of notes, while well, this is a fairly basic feature which allows you to draw on the screen using your controller, it might be useful if you need to write down a quick squawk code or something of that nature. And then a really useful addition is the ability to show Navigraph. Uh, you need to link your Navigraph account and via Symlink it will show in a separate window, um, which is also integrated into Avitab. A very, very useful feature. A very good suite and selection of options through Avitab. It can be positioned and manipulated as necessary. Quite rightly, a very popular application and being integrated by third-party developers. What you can't do in Avitab is have moving media, but you can in Move VR by, yes, you guessed it, Folco. It's a free download and goes into your resources plugins menu. Move VR will allow you to import various documents as well as your browser into your VR cockpit. The menu is fairly straightforward and can be manipulated and resized and positioned as desired. I've got Google open and you do need it open on your desktop in order for Move VR to access it. I've set up a number of different tabs in Google. One is the Orbix website. I can access that. A text file. And I've also got a chart coming straight off the internet. And again, all the controls work as one would expect them to on the normal desktop. And using the scroll bars, you can scroll up and down and so on. As mentioned earlier, you can access moving media in Move VR. And uh, here I'm demonstrating with uh, YouTube playing. Resize and position to suit you. And the interface is very very good it's not clunky like a lot of the other ones tend to be and there's no limitation in terms of having move vr and avitab together both move vr and avitab from falco are available from the explain.org store and as mentioned previously they're free they can also be used in the normal 2d screen mode as well as in vr Great programs, highly recommended. And finally, I want to mention an add-on that many of us have, the GTN 750. 
It's available from Flight One Software for Prepared and from Reality XP for both Prepared, FSX and Explain. Whilst you cannot access external data via the GTN 750, there's very little in terms of navigation and your flight that you can't access through the GTN 750. In addition to the typical flight plan and airports etc, there's different ways of accessing a host of information including airports and relevant charts, particularly if you're flying in the States. There's charts for all the airports. Unfortunately that's not available in Europe. So we're looking at uh, Kilo Tango Echo X-Ray Telerud. We're on an approach to Telerud right now and as we bring up the chart so it shows us in real time the aircraft. We're on the localizer now for runway 09 and again the chart is showing the aeroplane in real time. We can find out a host of information about any airport including arrival procedures, runway length, frequencies and so on. It does take a little time to dig into the depths of the GTN 750 but it's highly worth it and rewarding. Well I hope you found that useful and informative. Some of the interfaces are still quite clunky and to some degree too big to actually fit in the cockpit and be usable. But there's certainly progress there and things such as Avitab or Aviator's Tablet, fantastic and very usable application. Great for x -Plane. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope to see you all again soon and bye for now.